Hello everyone, this is my digital unit plan, Designing Homes with Math. It has a civic component of optimizing homes for people in need. So you can see this is the unit summary, the subject area it's intended for, the grade level, and the California content standards it will hit. Here are also the big ideas and the essential questions students must answer at the end of the digital unit plan to be assessed. Here you can also see the student learning objectives. These are objectives that that will be incorporated in every lesson that I have provided. First, let's take, take a look at lesson number one. Although it says lesson number one, this will not be the first lesson. The first lesson will, before the first lesson is given, I'll give them an entry level assessment about the formulas and algebra they have, they, the, the knowledge and algebra and formulas that they know. This last teacher lecture, it's about the history of mathematics, and particularly the Egyptian geometry and how they developed geometry. During this presentation, the, the students will be given guided notes. They'll be required to do two mind maps that I'll talk about in a few seconds. And these are the formulas that they need. These formulas are required to find the volume of a three-dimensional figure, the area of a base, and it will also help them in identifying cross-sections of 3D objects. These formulas are also going to be assessed through a mix and match puzzle and will also be assessed during the exam. Below you can see that another part of this guided notes are the activity. This is the activity that helps the students in knowing how to analyze daily like objects into geometric figures. For example, the moon they would have to know how to how to relate it or how to comp compare it to a geometric object we have discussed. So, as you can see in the picture in this perspective, it would be a circle, but it's also a sphere. And how to find how would you find the volume of it? Well, you will use a formula and a fountain. This one is a little bit more challenging because it it expresses different geometric figures at once. The coffee mug is another daily like object which will resemble a cylinder. The soccer ball here resembles plenty of geometric figures. One is the regular pentagon and the regular hexagon. Although we will not see their three-dimensional, their corresponding three-dimensional figures, we will see their 2D, two-dimensional figure. And next is the square base pyramid. I left this one at the end because it encompasses the whole teach, the, the whole lecture number one about how the Egyptians used these ropes to create them, and it it also is the I believe is the most challenging for them because it has a triangular face, it has a square based square base, so it would have, and it also we you would require the volume formula of a square based pyramid. Now let's take a look at the lesson. For this lesson, first I will tell them what we'll be covering and the student the student learning objective the student learning objective is to identify the applications of geometry in constructing houses by comparing objects to similar geometric shapes and their properties first I'll discuss about the definition of geometry where it came from these are the mind maps about geo and metry what words can you come up with have geo in them and the guided notes will help them in including their own and mine different ones and viewing the similarities as you can see is the geocentric model and it, they would also write down why and the geocentric model is a perfect example the geocentric model is to put the it's the model in astronomy where you put the earth in the middle geology the study of the earth so geo means earth another one is metric to, to measure. The metric system is a perfect example. Then I will discuss about Ramses II, how he developed geometry by sending his workers into measuring the land in order to tax people. Then I will discuss about comparing the objects to geometric shapes. So these are how to identify geometric shapes in the real world. 
And by doing that, we can find its volume, its area. We can find several characteristics of it. And as you can see, engineers use this. And they, they, they use this to build and construct stuff, as you can see in these pictures. Next, I will talk about the intuition and assumptions. So this is how, how the formulas, why the formulas require these stuff. As you can see, the cylinder and the perfect cone, which is the first and third figure in this picture, the, the formula for the volume of the cone are very similar. The only difference is that the cone one has a one third in the front. And you can tell it has a one third because it's like if you're shaving off one, you're shaving off two thirds of it. This is intuition, assumptions, and properties that the students should use when trying to analyze daily like objects and geometric shapes. Next, I will talk about how the Egyptians constructed these stuff and they used these rope stretching, these ropes to stretch them and create this right triangle you see between the side length 3 and 4. This, this slide also contains an audio file of how, peop, how um, people in construction use it to construct upright walls. Next, I talked about the constructions, the collateral objects that the Egyptians created, such as the, the square-based pyramid. Next, I talked about, I'll talk about the formulas. The reason they are included in this slide are because these are formulas that the Egyptians didn't really have. They were created later on. They were created through this develop, through their development. An example was Pythagoras and his followers. And with the knowledge of the Egyptians, they created the Pythagorean theorem. Here's a slide. It's a soft introduction because later on we'll talk about the Pythagorean theorem. This is, I'll also assess them at the end with the Kahoot to make sure they have, they have all the knowledge they require to, to, to continue. Now let's look at lesson two. Lesson two is a Weber size and an iPad interactive activity. For the Weber size, it's, it is a problem solving digital activity. They will need, they will be assessed on budgeting on optimization and knowing how to find the area and the volume specifically it's a digital one because they need geogebra with geogebra it's a graphing tool and for problem three and and four they can graph these rooms and they really do need geogebra because if they graph these rooms they're not perfect squares or perfect rectangles they're they have extra edges and with, by graphing them they can tell and and from there they can dissect it and solve for the volume of it. They are also required in GeoGebra to create a 2D floor plan with these requirements in the blue box. This is a sample one. This is not the one they are required to do. This is something similar. It will have different um, instructions. Next they will create a 3D floor plan in Minecraft. The reason they have to the reason they're given Minecraft because in Minecraft you can you can tell you can measure everything and you have a they can give the students a good concept of the units they are working with. Additionally, to Minecraft, they will also be required to find the volume of each room. So, I give them practice problems to find the volume of cuboids. As you can see, these cuboids aren't perfect. So, but by dissecting them at certain parts, you can use two formulas to find the volume, two volume of the cuboids. And this will be required for their presentation because they will be required to find, again, to find the volume of the rooms, which will be cuboids. Now let's look briefly look at lesson number three. This is a graphic, graphic organizer. It is a sequencing, sequencing graphic organizer because they are required to find the volume, the area of the base, the cross sections, and look at any similarities they have. For example, here, I, I didn't just an example, the, of a ice cream cone. First, what does this, what does this op daily like object resemble to? It resembles as a perfect cone. Step two, with the area of the base, a circle. 
so I'll use, I would have to use radius and I here you can see it show their work it's very important and at the end I will also assess them step 7 is crucial because they are assessed if they are able to find all the things I as they are required and to assess them on the on measurements for example if they're looking for the volume their answers should be in cubed and for volume it should be squared these are stuff that I'll be covering in a different lesson it, additionally they are required to find the cross sections this is another lesson that's going to begin before this activity begins but as you can see I have provided them with two links these two links are a brief introduction of what cross sections are and I also give them pictures so they can understand it better as you can see a cross section is cutting a geometric figure and obtaining a 2d dimensional figure as you can see in these pictures now let's look at the assessments these are all the assessments this is my assessment plan these are all the assessments that will be used and particularly here is a formative assessment it's a mix and match game for them to mix and match the volumes the volume formulas and the area formulas to know the difference between them because one obviously one yields uh, in measurements cubed and the other one in squared. Next to it, as you can see, is a rubric. This is a rubric to the summative assessment of their student presentation. Well, as I said before, they will have to find all their measurements of their home. And before these questions begin, I also are going to, they also are going to be giving a formative assessment through peer review work. Here, as you can, you will see a summary of all the assessments I'll be using for this unit plan to make sure the students are retaining the information for the last one it is a formative assessment it is an open discussion on the essential questions that you saw in the beginning of the page although this will not um it is intended to hit every student it might not because it'll be through equity cards it'll, this would be more like a formative assessment than a summative assessment but although it is an ec there are equity cards, I will still pick students that I know that are still struggling or to make sure that they retain the information. Now let's look at what else this digital unit plan contains. I also included a template to this digital unit plan, which is a more detailed version of the, what the first page contains. And I also added useful websites. Uh, these useful websites are links and tools that I use to create this digital unit plan ideas that I used and that I build it on furthermore I at the end of the day I did like what my end result my digital unit plan but I would love your feedback into into knowing how to improve my digital unit plan thank you very much for listening